The second form of transport that you will need to know is osmosis. Whenever you see the term osmosis, it always refers to the movement of water. Osmosis then is the movement of water from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration and a membrane is required. No carrier molecule or energy in the form of ATP is required. There are three terms you will need to know in regard to the movement of water and they are hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. Hypertonic refers to the solution with the greatest concentration of solute compared to another. Hypotonic refers to the solution with the least amount of solute compared to another. And isotonic refers to solutions with the same amount of solute. When given different concentrations of solutions, you will have to be able to identify which solutions are hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. And based on your classification, you will need to be able to predict what will happen to the various solutions. Let's look at an example. The first step is to identify the hypertonic solution. Assume that the dots in this diagram are sodium ions in a water environment. In this diagram, we can see that the red blood cell has less sodium ions than the surrounding fluid it is in. Therefore, we can conclude that the red blood cell is hypotonic to the hypertonic solution it has been placed in. Remembering that water always moves toward the hypertonic solution then, I know that water will move out of the red blood cell into the surrounding fluid, causing the red blood cell to shrivel or what is called crenate. Now you do the next two. Identify the condition of the red blood cell relative to the solution it is placed in and predict the outcome. Great. Now that you understand osmosis, let's move on to the last two methods of transport.